G'day and welcome to Escape Artist. This week I'm doing a review on my KLR650. So stay tuned and I'll give you my thoughts after riding this for 60,000 kilometres. Plenty of people recognise this immediately as a KLR650 but I do get quite a lot of questions asking what bike is it that you ride and that's because I've changed a lot of things, I've, I've painted it differently from what it was and I've taken all the stickers off. This one here is a 2008 model which is the first of the uh, first model of the revised KLR650. The very first one was 1987 and they discontinued the KLR in 2018. Um, those of us that are Kawasaki fans are still waiting with bated breath as to um, what it is they're going to replace it with. The second generation KLR650s are single cylinder water cooled four strokes and uh, only have 37 brake horsepower which isn't a lot and in Australia that qualifies it for uh, as a LAMS bike which is Learner Approved Motorcycle Scheme which is a, a, an initiative uh, that was introduced quite some time ago by the government to try and stop uh, beginners from killing themselves on really high powered bikes. It comes down to uh, power to weight ratio. So this bike only has 37 brake horsepower uh, out of the showroom. There are things that you can do to this bike to increase that and when I bought this second hand uh, in 2010 it had already had that work done to it and that's mostly work with the carburetor and, uh, and a new exhaust and that increases the, the power. It's, I would say it's no longer uh, a LAMS approved model. first thing I noticed about this bike when I took it for a test ride was how tall it was and I'm five foot ten uh, and I can I can comfortably get my feet on the ground like so uh, if you were sort of five eight and under it's probably a bit too much of a bike the seat is very comfortable which is great for long long stretches of dirt or highway uh, the seating position is great and also the standing position is very comfortable as well which makes it a, a really good bike for adventure riding it has a 22 litre tank which is just fantastic. Uh, you, you can get larger tanks to, to, to put on the bike as you can with all models but at 22 litres this gives me around about 400k range which is brilliant for going long distances here in Australia. Um, fuel is never something I've ever had to worry about so I really like the big uh, fuel capacity in this bike. Now despite my dad being a mechanic I'm not a mechanically minded person um, but this bike is super easy to work on I've, I've come across a few problems with it and I've been able to fix it so that really is saying something uh, it's it's a very basic bike it's got no frills none whatsoever none it's uh, it doesn't even have a digital taco it's still analog so literally no frills it is it's just a, a, a raw pure motorcycle Despite the fact that the KLR650 has no frills, no bling, it's a very, very capable bike and it will take you anywhere you want it to go uh, and back again with a minimum of fuss. I I've taken this bike places it really shouldn't go, two up and loaded with luggage. I'm not sure how it made it, to be honest with you. It is an absolute workhorse. It gave me no grief whatsoever and uh, I've had some magnificent adventures on this bike. So let's go through some of the pros of this bike. The first one that I really like is that it is easy to work on. As I mentioned earlier, I'm no mechanic and I've managed to solve uh, mechanical issues with this bike out in the field with a minimum of tools and, and get myself home again. I really do like that about this bike. It's comfortable. It's a very comfortable bike. Uh, I've, I've ridden others that just aren't. Uh, you know, you're on them for a little while and you want to hop off. That's not the case with this. I've done seven hour days on this bike. I wanted to get off at the end, but it's still, it was, it was a pretty good bike for, uh, for what it was. It's pretty comfortable. I love the big tank on this bike. As I mentioned earlier, fuel has never been an issue. And in a country like Australia, where there are vast distances between fuel stops, it can be an issue, not on this bike. It's a very capable and reliable bike. 
uh, as I've mentioned already, it'll take you anywhere you want to go and it's given me no fuss at all in the 10 years, the, the decade that I've been riding this bike. Any problems that I have had with it are, are things that I really should have picked up on just doing minor maintenance. So everything that's gone wrong has been my fault, not the bikes. One of the big pluses for the KLR 650 and the reason that I bought this bike is its affordability. I paid $7,200 for this bike in 2010 and today in 2021 you can pick these up for about three and a half to four thousand dollars which for a bike like this that can do what it can do is exceptional value another big plus for me personally is that i'm not afraid to put this bike down it's, it's a very durable robust bike that is fixed very easily and um, I've, I've put this bike down more times than i than i care to admit um, which is why it now looks like something out of Mad Max Fury Road instead of the very pretty bike that it once was. But I, I really do like that about this bike. If I had a twenty to thirty thousand dollar motorcycle, I, I really would be conscious of the the cost of the damage of putting it down. And I don't have that problem with this bike. Let's explore some of the cons of this bike. It's a very heavy bike. It's 176 kilograms dry, 196 kilograms wet. Uh, it's not particularly nimble. So you combine those two things together and uh, you've got a fairly awkward bike, I guess. Another issue that a lot of uh, people complain about with the KLR is its oil consumption. I personally haven't had any trouble with oil consumption apart from one time when I was riding through the desert doing massively long kilometers on quite warm days and uh, it did use quite a bit of oil so really to combat that you just I carry oil everywhere I go the plastics on the KLR 650 are rubbish so I mean I've, I've 10 years of use but you know I'm getting little stress fracture things like this here and uh, some of this could have been uh, avoided with crash bars, which I never ever got. Uh, and because I've put the bike down so many times, I've ended up with, with this sort of thing here going on where I've got fractures and I've had to glue it all back together with fiberglass and things like that. But uh, it's, it's, a, it's a cheap bike, so the components that you get uh, are going to be a little bit flimsy in some area and they've obviously saved some money by putting some cheap shitty plastics on there. They work okay for aerodynamics, but um, really, uh, from a protective point of view, there is zero. The last con for this bike, and my personal biggest gripe, and I know that it's a massive con concern or gripe for other riders, is the screen. Uh, this is not a stock screen, I've managed to fix the problem. On the original, on the stock version of the KLR, the windscreen sits back here somewhere, and it buffets wind straight into your face and rattles your helmet, rattles your teeth, and it is shit. Whoever designed it needs a slap. I hope whoever it is is still getting slapped because it was a piece of shit. Um, it took me forever to find a solution. I'm really glad I did because uh, it was an all-consuming fault when you were doing 110 down the highway or a dirt road. All you could think about was how freaking noisy it was and that you were just earplugs didn't help nothing you were just getting rattled to death um, so yeah the single biggest problem with this bike the original screen and if you happen to have one of these I highly recommend you change it I've seen people cut these off because it's that big a problem they would rather have the wind buffet them on the on the chest than in the face massive massive fault with these bikes so some other aspects that need to be mentioned that aren't necessarily pros or cons but certainly need to be to be brought up the suspension of the bike is it great no it isn't uh, it's ample I dealt with uh, the stock suspension for many many years and and went lots of places uh, without uh, too much trouble I've, I've changed the suspension since um, and it is a whole lot better but uh, suspension it's not great but it is ample the power and performance of the bike uh, some would say that it's underpowered at 37 horsepower off the showroom floor you could definitely say that was the case however uh, I've never been on a on a off-road track and wished for more power the only time I really feel that I need more power on this bike is maybe when I'm on the highway it might be nice to have um, a few more ponies in reserve 
but it'll sit on 110 k's an hour with with no trouble at all and if you do go above that 110 k's an hour you start to lose fuel pretty quickly the brakes on the KLR 650 are not fantastic at all uh, you've got a single disc not particularly large on the front and then on the rear you've got this tiny little disc down here um, they're not great you do get used to them and I, I suppose I ride with a certain level of caution knowing that the stopping power of this bike isn't fantastic it certainly got me by with without um, uh, too much drama but if I were to complain about one thing mechanically with the KLR650, it would be the brakes. They're just, they're just not good enough. So in conclusion, the KLR650 is a great bike that will go anywhere. It's reliable, it's comfortable, and it's easy to work on. It's also one of the most customizable adventure bikes on the market, probably second only to the DR650. This is a really good entry-level bike. Perhaps not the best entry-level bike on the market because of its weight and cumbersome nature as a motorcycle but its affordability and simplicity as a machine uh, are really good for the beginner and, and it's something that they can ride without being afraid of making mistakes. It's also used by many experienced riders who love the bike for its raw nature and, and its capabilities as an adventure motorcycle. This bike will teach you how to ride and if you can ride this bike through sand, mud, uphill, downhill, you'll be able to ride pretty much anything.